Hi folks, Joyce here from Cloud9 Spain. Today we're going to tackle the Tiguron Resort. reasons why I wanted to take you here today, Alfredo, nice to see you, is because this is a huge resort that just doesn't get the accolades that it deserves. It's a one of a kind here in Spain. You've got so much going on and it has so much to offer. On our left, we have Benal Madina. On our right, Fuengarola. The two worlds kind of collide here. There's a little bit of controversy about whether the resort is actually in Benal Madina or Fuengarola. More about that later. But here on this side, we have Higuron Resort West. And on the left is La Reserva de Higuron. The hotel, we can just see kind of the rooftop, has a fantastic infinity pool, adults only. Five-star amenities within the resort, Nagomi Spa, 24-hour gym, on the Caravel train station. There's a tram that takes you around the resort to the beach club, which is private, by the way, for only hotel guests and residents. So really, I, I really want to take you here, Alfredo, today to just sort of break it all down. It's, it's quite a overwhelming, daunting resort that I think our clients should have a, a better look at. Well, you know what, Alfredo, I'm so glad you're joining me again today because I wanted us to tackle the Higuron Resort. Right. This is where we are right now, right? We are. We're bordering Benal Madana, kind of Fuengarola, and even Mijas. They all kind of come together here in this location. So it can be a little bit confusing about the actual address of where Higuron Resort is located. But I think my vote is Benal Madana. What about you? I, as a long-time resident of the area, I'd say so. But I think they generally like to pr promote themselves as being Fuengarola. I think it has slightly <laughs> more slightly more panache so, yes um and, and you get on just to be clear you get on is is kind of a an, an area really isn't it it's not like one gated community per se is it or Cor is it correct it's the area around here but but you know we get a lot of inquiries about the Higuron resort and i think it's one of these places that you really have to see to appreciate so this is why I, you know i invited you to come along with me today because i just want to take a quick little tour to introduce the resort and all of, that it has to offer because it really is quite impressive and it's a one-of-a-kind resort here in Spain. And within the resort, you get on the, I mean it pretty much covers, well, I'm right in saying it covers from the mountain just above the motorway which is where we've just driven underneath now, Correct. all the way down to the beach. Exactly, it does. And so you have some spectacular views especially from this north end of the resort and you know it's it's, um, it has quite a history. You know, it's it's anchored by the Hilton Curio Hotel. Uh, it's a gated community, 24 hour security, of course, soft security during the day, which we are now entering the north entrance here now. But at night, of course, the gates come down, very secure. Um, and you know, this resort has been in operation for, you know, around 20 years, just about 20 years. And again, you know, it started with the Hilton Hotel, which is part of the Curio collection. And they have, you know, five-star amenities, including the Nagomi Spa, 24-hour, uh, seven-day-a-week, state-of-the-art gym, several restaurants, lounges, bars, including a Michelin star restaurant, a really, really lovely infinity rooftop pool um, that's accessed only for adults only. Uh, you know, and as you can see here, the, the views from up here are quite spectacular on this north side of the, um, of the resort. That ahead of us in the distance, that's Fongirola, isn't it? That's the, correct. The city of Fongirola. Exactly. And here on our left, this is um, Villa Sena, which is on the market. Oh, yeah. So yes. a very, very strange looking sort of thing, right? It's well, yeah, like you know, unusual. the architecture here is, it's, uh, it's actually quite interesting because the brothers that started Higuron Resort uh, are educated in the U.S. at UC Berkeley or University of California Berkeley and that's where they studied their architecture degree. Right, okay. So the architecture in here is really interesting and you know we have a mixture of apartments, townhouses, semi-detached homes and villas. So you know the prices range from 400,000 on the lower end up to several million on the higher end. So you know it really is an eclectic mix 
of residences here. And then again, right in front of us here, this is the Hilton Curio Hotel. And there is the lovely tram behind us. It takes our, the guests and residents through the resort, picks you up at the Carvel train station, takes you to the beach, to the, through the resort and to the shops outside. So you really can live car free here, car free living, which is fantastic. You know, the thing about this resort, and here's the hotel here on our right, the main entrance. The, the resort has so much to offer. So on our right hand side here, entrance to the spa, the gym, Soyo, the Michelin star restaurant, some of the other lounges and restaurants, 24 hour gym, you know, paddle courts as well. Isn't it? Yes, say. there's several paddle courts, volleyball, you know, the, the resort itself hosts itself to volleyball championships. Uh, now there is a basketball training facility as well. So, you know, the resort theme works really well, which is not eat, pray, love, which some of us like to live by, but work, play, live. I think they work. Yeah, I think I remember when they launched the 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 two the you know West about five six years ago, and they were already going with the sort of work, play, live. Was that it? I know. I think yeah. it's live, play, work. That one. Yes. And and at the time, it wasn't really a thing. This idea of like remote working and and digital nomads and and resort amenities. You know, generally when you bought an apartment an apartment in a building, it was maybe a community pool and very little else and they were kind of ahead of their time what do you think well that's just it you know i think you know it is an award-winning resort and like i said earlier it is it is one of a kind and i do think that you're absolutely right they're pioneers in a lot of um what other resorts now have sort of you know copycatted um in terms of offering co-working centers places to to reside and then amenities world-class amenities so you know and, and having it on the train line which is extremely unusual yep. and unique and makes it such a, such an attractive resort as well because you truly can take the train from the airport you know to the Caravelle station within five minutes from the station you are fully in, immersed in the resort and in your holiday home or permanent residence. So at the moment we are on the La Reserva side of the resort. So the resort is basically you know divided into essentially two sides. This is the more mature, the more established part of the resort, the La Reserva del Higaron. And here in front of us here and, and surrounding us is what's called South Beach. So this is one of the original communities, fantastic sea views from these apartments, probably starting around 500,000, but great sea views, really nice location, um, very quiet, and yet within walking distance all to the hotel and all of the amenities. And if you don't want to walk, of course the tram will come by yeah. and pick you up. I think the tram is a great, great idea because what you have is, although we're right next to the beach, it is steep. And you know, in the summer months, walking up the hills after the beach, a day at the beach is a bit of a pain, but you don't really want to take the car. So I think that's a that's a winning winning idea there. Exactly, I agree. And you know, and the tram is so convenient. Um, you don't, you know, you can take it to the beach, like you said, it takes you around the resort and you really do have the opportunity to live, you know, car free. The, the, just for a bit more context, where the organization that this is next to is an older established organization of mostly villas, so all villas actually, called uh, La Capiania. Yes. Which is a very nice, very peaceful, well thought of, mature organization. So, so it's neighboring a good place rather than sometimes you get a development and then well, you're it's, absolutely you right. Know, it's, you know, it's, not, it's not great what is next to it. Correct. No, yeah. La Capania has a wonderful reputation and is still in high demand here for, for the quality of villas, the privacy. It's really lovely. And you got the Benamadena Pueblo village is just down the road. It's like five minutes in the car. Exactly. Where you have the, the famous stupa Buddhist. That's right. The Buddhist monument. temple. That's, yeah. You've got the butterfly sanctuary. Here on our left is that tram that we were just mentioning. So it's super cute. It almost looks like a San Francisco streetcar, which you know may have some influence from UC Berkeley. Yeah, true, good point. <laughs> and for, go back to the prices for a second. I remember when it was launched, I think the prices were sort of sub, like high 200s, early 300s. That's right. And so the, there's been quite a bit of value or growth over the last five, six Absolutely. years. Absolutely, it's been a great plus price to invest and it still is. Um, you know, and the, the interesting thing is that uh, it's very high demand. Projects will be released and sold out in in note in record time. 
So, um, you know, still a great place to invest here. This is called the Palm Collection. This is a series of villas here and semi-detached homes. There's still several villas available, dead end road here on the end. So, um, but really nice, super modern. Um, you can see the architecture is really interesting. And even, you know, some of these um, buildings, not here, these are of course brand new, but some of the original, uh, like the South Beach, that was built around 2018, but it's still quite modern and kind of ahead of its time. Um, so let's just see it. You have some lovely, lovely, here's a great uh, aspect of the sea views. And these tower cranes you see in front of us, we're going to see this in a minute, but this is sort of their, the crown jewel of the La Reserva side of the resort right now. It's called Carat or Carat, and it's an ultra luxe uh, development that is extremely sustainable and eco-friendly. I, th I think it can't be stressed enough that it's very unusual to find a resort with so much choice so near the airport in and within the train line right next to the motorway but it's so big that it doesn't feel like you're next to a motorway or or amongst you know that's super unusual in this part of the coast. Well you're absolutely right it doesn't exist doesn't exist. You know, the train line in, ends in Fuengirola, so we're almost at the end of the train line here. And you're absolutely right. It's, this is, it's so quiet and peaceful in here, and yet we are in the thick of everything. We're, you know, pretty much midway between Malaga and Marbella. Uh, the airport's only about 15 minutes away. Uh, again, can be accessed by train if you don't want to drive. So again, let's just continue a little bit further south on the, um, the reserve side of the resort and you will see that the west side of the resort that we'll be coming to shortly really has a different flavor and, and, and more um, unique uh, just feel to it as well so you really can sense two different sides of the resort so this is more of the original of course uh, buildings you have some attached homes here on our left apartments on the right so these are probably in the you know around 20 ish years old but still in really really nice um, condition the, the resort itself is is kept you know immaculate in terms of nationalities I know that I hear there's a lot of Scandinavians living here there are here. you know and, and you know and, and rightfully so you know the the resort itself you know Scandinavians love to be able to of course ride their bikes do a lot of walking and within the resort itself there's over 10,000 square meters of of outdoor walking trails biking trails here on our left this is called Peninsula a very boutique community of some detached homes with fantastic sea views so that's under construction here. This on our left is the basketball training facility that I mentioned. So you'll often see very, very tall guests <laughs> here in the resort. <laughs> so now we're kind of sneaking away a little bit down the hill on the way towards the beach direction. We are. So we're on the south end now of the, of the official original gates. And here is on our left. So this again, on our this here on our right now, it was on our left, but we've taken a roundabout. Um, this is one of the original developments as well. Med 1, absolutely beautiful architecture. And here is Karat. So we'll just turn around here in a second, but I just wanted to show you the entrance. Super modern, really, really um, a neat, interesting development that is their sort of crown jewel of La Reserva Privé uh, right now. Is it all developed and owned by the same people or is it different companies? No. So there's several different developers in here. And of course, um, if you'd like to call them sort of, sort of the anchor developers were the, are the two brothers. So the Rodriguez Martinez brothers that I mentioned that are the trained architects from that went to school in California. So one brother essentially has been overseeing La Reserva, where we are now and the other brother has been looking after the Higuron West side of the resort. This is another really lovely, I keep saying lovely, but they're also nice. This is called Panoramica on our right here. These brown and white ones. This is Middle Views. Oh, middle Views, right. Okay. Yep. Here's Med 1, fantastic infinity pool here. It's like kind of hanging over the edge of the cliff. Funny story, Middle Views, it's spelt M I. Middle. Double double D E L. E -L correct. And, and and I've been wondering ever since they launched it whether it was just a typo and they meant to say <laughs> middle views. Don't know. So this is the train right Here's here. Here's the train. Right. Here's so, the train line. Right. Yep. 
Okay, so all uh, right. Well, here on the right is the Garbachal train station. Garbachal train station. See how convenient that is. Wow. Yeah. So just a few minutes, and there's actually a platform here that you don't have to uh, go all the way into the train station. You can just hop on there on our right. And continuing down under the train line, we're coming towards the beach here. Okay, so this is down here will be the coast road, right? They call it, no? So correct. The, the, this is the coastal road. So this is on our right here is the actual train station entrance. And we're going to, sh there's a couple of things I want to point out the beach here. One being, and I'm sure you've been there, Los Morenos. Okay. Right? Nope. <laughs> you haven't. So Los Morenos. No, I'm curious. Okay. It's, it's one of the top seafood and fish restaurants in Spain. Okay. So it that has explains a, why I haven't been there. I probably can't afford it. <laughs> no, there's a, well, there's a Chiringuito as well. Okay. So it's, um, it's very, very well known, super reputation. And if we can make it there with this traffic, we will, I'll point it out. Three, two, one. Okay. Here we are at the beach. By the way, it's a lovely beach here. You know, it's, it's nice white sand, it's, it's very wide, uh, it's a fantastic beach. And of course the tram will take you down here to the beach. And the beach here kind of goes from here, which is Carvajal, to Fajerola, right? Correct. All the way. So, so you, you go got all the way yeah, along so the go promenade. To all Torre the Blanca, to... Boliches, and then Fajerola. So. That's right. So mm -hmm. you certainly could have a nice long stroll, or if you wanted to have a run, certainly a nice run. So here's Los Morinos, the Chiringuito on our right, and the more fine dining is coming up on our left. Now, you see this sign here? It says the Beach Club, Higuron. So this is part of the Higuron Resort. Okay. So they have a beach club here with your sun lounges and beds. And then here on our right, this is part of the Higuron Resort as well. That's the beach club. So there's several restaurants in there. There's a private pool area for just Higuron Resort guests and residents. So it's fantastic. So, and again, the tram will take you here. So again, for context, if you go left on this roundabout, you can take it to Fortrola in about five, 10 minutes in the car. And then to the right is the whole Benalma de la Costa, sort of stretch room, maybe 15 minutes over to Puerto Marina on the right, or the Fortrola Marina on the left. Exactly, so this is kind of your, this is your stomping this is, ground, This is my patch. It? Yes, this Bikini, is your If you can get bikinis for 10 euros right here. <laughs> Brazilians yeah. for 10 euros, I presume they mean Brazilian bikini. <laughs> it can be Brazilian, Brazilian. Yeah. I'm not touching that one. This is your patch. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so back into the resort we go. side but we're going to making our way over to hanger on west although there's a few things i just wanted to point out over here because again there's some opportunities for our clients that are still looking for some some apartments or some residences so this on our right is sea views reserve and for those of our clients that potentially would like a penthouse there's actually two penthouses still available in here which would be they're going to be ready by the end of this year you can move in q1 of next year so that's kind of unheard of to be able to have that option as well so um great opportunity potentially for someone we also have med 2 so we passed med 1 earlier this is med 2 that's people are just moving into now and 
Hagaron Bay, another uh, development. This is a new one, isn't it? Newish. Newish, yes. Okay, and look, almost by magic, we are now on the west, coming up to the west side of the resort. So this is Panoramica, again, on our right in front of us. We've just sort of done a, a loop around. And here we are coming into the west side of the resort. And again, live, work, play. Now we know the right, the right order. Uh, order for those three words. I think we've been screwing it up all day. <laughs> I suppose anything that you probably would have to be aware of is depending on where you're buying, you could have a bit of building noise near you, right? There's so much construction going on. You could. So you'd have you to could. kind of take that into account when you, you not not like it's a big negative because these things are going up quickly. They are, yes. But, and you know, but even though that is true, however. Most of these developments are boutique and they're relatively small and they're spread out. So even though you see several tower cranes going on, you may not necessarily hear the road, the, you know, the noise or road noise from, from where you are in the resort. I think it's still relatively quite quiet. Mm. Yeah, so, I noticed that actually, surprisingly so, because like you said, you think you, with so many cranes and things, you'd be hearing lorries and all sorts of Yeah, no, it's quite quiet. The other thing to point is that on the train station side, you will get every 20 minutes a, a beeping sound from the train doors you will. closing. But it's, ele it's electric, isn't it? So otherwise yeah. the train's yeah, quite no, quiet. Yeah, tra no, tra the trains are quiet. There's no rumbling or anything like that, but you do get like a beep, 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 beep. The door is open. Yeah. If your window's open and you're right in the front of it, uh, obviously <laughs> you're not, you know, but it's a, uh, I can imagine that that is not the sort of thing you think about in advance until you no, get that's it. True. And that's then you want to, if it annoys you, then you're uh, well, stuck. Well, it's one of those things that blends in eventually. So mm -hmm. on our right, dog park, and right then there's a children's park right beside the dog park. What weather? I mean, not that you can see on camera, but on the right, those black and white buildings. Which yes. Are those? These, so, welcome to Higuron West. That's Higuron West? We are now in Higuron West. But this, they look quite different. Yes. Wow. So, each of the development, they've changed slightly as they, you know, change the phases or, incre you know, kind of continue to build. Here on our right, Higuron South Residences, these were only launched earlier this year and they're pretty much sold out at this point. They haven't been incredibly imaginative with the names, have they? So you got you got on south, you got on west. Hanger on north. Med one, then med followed one, by med two. Med two. Yes, we have Panoramica. <laughs> yes, I suppose that's. So we have we have some, yeah, lots of names. So this is all considered Hanger on West, and you're absolutely right. As they release the phases, they ch you know they change the architecture slightly in some of the buildings, but it's all considered Hanger on West. And you can see that even though there's several developments in here in the resort, it is still quite spacious and spread out. Yeah. On our left, see the sign work? That's where the co-working center will be. So they're starting construction here now, okay? And we really are on the opposite side of the hotel. Here's the resort itself. So you can actually have a peek in here because the gate is open and you can see the hotel, the tennis, the paddle, the volleyball courts, swimming pool, some of the restaurants. It's a fantastic view actually of the resort and the hotel. Wow. So it's really, it really is lovely. And hopefully this kind of helps, because like I said earlier, it's, it's, it's a big animal to, to kind of understand. And unless you see it yourself, it can be a bit overwhelming and a bit confusing. So if, if somebody sees something for sale in get on resort somewhere, and it doesn't quite fit what they need, they should probably be aware that there's a dozen other choices. Well, that's just it. Within yes. the that completely different alternatives. Absolutely. With, with orientation, size, height, Views. amenities, the whole thing. Exactly, exactly. So it really helps if they, you know, kind of help us with some specifics about exactly what they're looking for. And then when we can, uh, you know, introduce appropriate developments and options. I think you have to ask yourself, how do you see yourself spending your time here? And if it's wanting to access, you know, the coast, maybe going into Malaga on a, on a regular basis or accessing the airport, you have that with the train line. You know, it's absolutely fantastic. And then of course, the trains will take you all over Spain. Um, so, you know, if that's where you see yourself spending your time and maybe using this as your kind of base but traveling throughout Spain or throughout Europe and you want easy access to the airport, um, it's a fantastic option. And then in terms of, uh, for example, if you have kids and you're thinking of moving here, schools, you've got, you got three 
international, international schools on the on the Veramadena side. You do. And I wanted to point out Aura here on our right, because this is another really nice boutique community of apartments, 37 apartments in total. That sign says 27. Oh gosh, it's 27. 27. It's, it's, potato, it's, potato, it's, potato, right? Oh, it's now 27. <laughs> it's hard to keep all these numbers straight. Okay, I knew it was, it was, I knew it was less than 40, <laughs> so I was close. You are, you are certainly more than a 10 <laughs> margin. 27 is even better. It's even more boutique. And there actually are some really, really nice options still available, if you can believe it. So this is what I was kind of mentioning before. It was like, this is mega construction, isn't it? This particular point. So if you were living in that house here on the left, you'd yes. be a little bit like, oh God, when is this stuff going to get done? Yes, like, but, but like, they're well on their way. Yeah, there are. It's surprisingly fast because in Spain with construction, a building can take 10 years if they take their time <laughs> or it can be up once they, they've got the financing in place that it can be up within a you know a few months exactly and you know and it's Higuron seems to have you know this down to a, a science because they really are well first of all things sell very very quickly uh and then they have the development underway and they deliver on time and with great quality you know as a result. So there's what, so maybe half a dozen different developers, give or take? Yes. Uh, here, and mostly apartment type units, yeah? Pri primarily apartments, uh, and then you do have some townhouses and some standalone villas. So, it, but you're right, primarily apartments, because of course that meets the demand. Most of us still want to have lock up and leave secondary homes, and this offers that with, of course, security and privacy and all the amenities that the resort offers and prices you said from more or less from about 400 for the for the off plan you know about four hundred thousand and above for the resales you're probably looking at about five hundred thousand and up and the other key ready units available yes right. plenty of key ready units available particularly on this side of the resort because these in, in higger on west as an example a lot of um, the owners are, have just been accepting the keys in the last few months. So, of course, some of them have decided to sell. Some of them were investors. So on this side of the resort, you have several um, options for resales. And it seems like ample parking as well. Lots of parking. And again, nice wide road. So you don't even, you know, so it has an expensive feel to it. So it doesn't feel overly crowded in here. They've done a very really nice job, um, you know, mapping out where the developments would be located. And so even though, uh, you know, it can be considered maybe, uh, you know, high density residential community, it doesn't feel that way. And also I would say that, I mean, given that I live in the area, I've never been into it. And that my point I'm making is that it's, even though you can go through it, there's no reason, unless you live here, there's no real reason to, it's not a shortcut to anything. No, that's just, so, exactly. So you really, so the people on these roads are generally, I would imagine people that live here, there's no through traffic if you like. Exactly, exactly. Yes, you're absolutely right. So it's really, if people are only in here, if they're, if they have reason to be in here. Now I did want to point this out because this just launched and this is called the COS and 36 maybe that's where you got the number from maybe so this is 36 townhouses starting at just over a million and that that is a very ultra luxe beautiful option with um fantastic views and on our left this is the valley collection on our right this is las lomas all right so this road am i am right uh, it just takes us back to more or less where we were parked, right? Exactly. But through the back. That's right. right. Yes. So we are now at the most western side of the res of Higuron West, and we are on our way out of the resort. Here we are. So we're coming up to the so on the top right, you might just see it in front of us, Iguidon. That's the original Iguidon restaurant, which is a very good restaurant with a great restaurant. reputation. And that's where we started our trip today. We did. And the views from up there, as you can imagine, as it's, as it's such an elevated position, the views are spectacular. Bum, 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 bum.